British restaurants were once a laughing stock, not anymore. Today, we have some of the most exciting restaurants in the world. But which are the best? And what are the restaurants that you really love? I asked you, and the response was amazing. We had over 12,000 nominations for restaurants all over the UK. Together with the best restaurant team, I've chosen the best, and tonight, my two favorite restaurants will be going head to head. They may be good, but do they have what it takes to go right to the top? Over the last six months, my team and I have been all over the country Simon, checking out your best restaurant nominations. And tonight, my search continues with another of the UK's favourite cuisines, Thai. Over the last 10 years, Thai food has taken Britain by storm. Even the pubs are doing it now. But really, top-notch, authentic Thai restaurants are so hard to find. Actually, can I have a chance, please? Thank you. I've eaten some great restaurants in Thailand, and I know that secret to authentic Thai food. It's all about getting that balance right between the sweet, bitter, hot, sour, and salty flavors. Tonight's contenders are going to have to be at the top of the game to impress me. From hundreds of Thai nominations, I've handpicked my top two to go head to head for a place in the semi finals. From St Andrews, Scotland's golfing capital, it's Nam Jim. <laughs> I just love to show, you know, how good Thai food is. I'm just very proud. They'll be fighting it out with a colossal Thai restaurant from the heart of London, Mango Tree. You want a one some some veg? I'm always fired up. I don't need Gordon to stick a rocket up my arse. I'm there, I'm ready. Nam Jim and the Mango Tree will be battling to prove they have what it takes to be my best Thai restaurant. For the first of three grueling challenges, I've dispatched 30 fervent foodies who will descend on each restaurant in turn and order en masse. First stop, 50 miles north of Edinburgh, it's Bonnie St Andrews. This town is not only famous for its golf venue, but also Nam Jim, an amazing Thai restaurant. It's run by a dynamic duo, husband and wife, Sandy and B, and they pride themselves on cooking authentic Thai cuisine. Today, I'm expecting nothing less than a hole in one. Sawadee How are you, my darling? Welcome to our kitchen. Mm. Mm. Good to see you. Mm. Anyone Scottish in the brigade? No, we are Thai. Sorry, well, husband. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the only Scot in the village. Uh. The first and only Thai restaurant in St Andrews, Nam Jim's charm and authentic cuisine has taken the town by storm. It's just simple but perfect. Determined to wow the locals, Bee's even created an inspired signature dish using Scotland's national fare, haggis. Very spicy. It doesn't actually taste like haggis, it tastes like pork, doesn't it? That's delicious. Love this. What I love most about this place is their <laughs> chef, B, she's bursting with energy. She's happy in her cooking, her staff are happy. Good. And it shows in the food. Amazingly, B had never cooked professionally until she and her husband, Sandy, opened Nam Jim eight years ago. Successful businesses is all in the detail. We, we kind of uh, try and be the best we can be. We use the best ingredients from Thailand. Great service. We just try and do everything as good as it can be, don't yeah. we? This has won the restaurant a huge following of celebrity golf fans. This is my hall of fame. That's um, Tiger Woods' mother, Mr. Sean Connery here. Mr. Samuel Jackson, he just said, thank you very much. Your food is wonderful. I was so proud. Now, B and Sandy's hard-fought reputation is about to be tested to its limits. My coach full of hungry diners are just round the corner. All 30 of them will expect a faultless meal in just two hours. I'm going to be over everything, not just in the dining room, but in the kitchen as well. Thank you. And as you know, I miss nothing. Okay. I'll be spotting okay. everything. <laughs> Manager Sandy is in charge of keeping all my 30 diners happy. He and his team must explain B's unique Thai dishes. One of the house specialities is the Thai Scottish haggis. It, uh, we can also make that with a vegetarian haggis, which is essentially pulses and nuts and oatmeal. Pete, the orders are starting to roll now, yeah? Yes. Yeah. As well as the haggis, B's menu includes vegetarian jungle curry and tamarind duck with pak choy. One tamarind duck. Two lamb 
to France. As fast as front of house send the orders through, B and her efficient Thai brigade are knocking out amazing food. Thai cuisine, it's quick. It's not a long-winded style of cooking. It's done in a very fresh and sort of rapid way. Sandy, the only Brit on the team, is the all-important link between the dining room and the kitchen. Are you at your weakest in here when they're speaking fluent Thai? Or... I just kind of ignore what they're talking about and I can see kind of what they're doing more than anything. They've been working together for so long. It's a really well-oiled machine. Well, it's not a race. For me, the standard's far more important. You know that? OK. If the starters are anything to go by, the standards don't seem to be a problem. That's like, I guess I've never tasted it. It's exceptional. It's absolutely beautiful. These brigade are on fire, but at this hectic pace, it's vital that every member of the team is on top of every detail. Is this the vegetarian one? Vegetarian. Sandy, stop, stop, stop. Coconut cream? There's no coconut cream on there. No, no. Before you take anything, you've got to tell her. Yeah. It's out of control here, isn't it? <laughs> so you're taking dishes, she doesn't know it's gone. Yeah. One lamb cutlets as well, guys. And that's all the starters done for everybody, then. Sandy thinks all the starters are out, but a quick scan of the dining room reveals he's missed a whole table. How are you both? Good, good. 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 What did you order? <laughs> Spicy haggis. Mm -hmm. uh, lamb cutlets. Lamb cutlets. Sandy, are we missing an order? We don't, we don't have to for starters. All the tables are taken, yeah? As front of house boss, Sandy should be all over this. So that's, so that's all gone. That's I've done it all. Yeah, no, so this, no, no, no. no, that's all gone. Really? Yes, I do. Uh, hang on. Are you sure? I think yeah. they, they don't take the lamb I've I, I took it. All right. Yeah. Okay, C3, they've got their food. So it smells nice. Can't taste it, but it smells nice. <laughs> We're missing a chili or something. Yeah, it's two C3, that's what we think. I've, I've okay, no problem. But two C3s as opposed to C2. Yeah, one C2. And you don't help matters when you take food, don't tell her where it's gone. I know. I'm just uh, the fly in the ointment. Okay, enjoy. At last, the missing table get their food. OK, OK, main cost be two, please. Okay. Whilst B's kitchen ramps up for the mains, Sandy's front of house team seem more and more disorientated. We've got more waiters in here now than we have chefs. Is that one more? Lamb's here. Do you know where you're going, Sandy? Sandy looks a little bit sort of lost there. <laughs> lost. You know, yeah, you know when he comes in? A little bit, yeah. Pressure like this. They just like to like to be out of the way. So you handle pressure better than he does? Yes. <laughs> Despite his confusion, Sandy's got nearly all the main courses and desserts out with 45 minutes to spare. And it's soon clear how he's done it. It's a bit weird that she's eating her dessert while I'm having my main course. I don't think we expected that when we ordered it. You know, when you ordered, I thought I would be watching you eat your starter and then we'd have our meal together. I'm sure it's best to serve the starter, yeah. gap, main course, gap, and then dessert. But we thought rather than somebody sit there eating while their partner has nothing for 20 minutes, it was less rude for somebody to be eating at the same time. I know that's personally how I would prefer it. It doesn't make sense. No, I, I agree. We haven't seen it so far in the competition. Okay, last table going out, guys. Yeah. Today, being a kitchen team, really have scored a hole in one. I went for the uh, Thai vegetarian haggis, which was really exquisite. The food was fantastic, start to finish. It was delicious, really knocked my socks off. After the food, really, I'm not bothered, it was good. Worth, uh, Worth waiting for. Yeah, yeah pretty much, yeah. Yeah. With such fantastic food, the weak link here is clearly front of house. I've spoken to the diners, and not everybody enjoyed having their dessert and the main course at the same time. Dessert is a sort of sweet grand finale, not to be eaten opposite a duck. The saving grace today is that everyone loved the food. That's, for me, the most important. Tighten up, get the service as good as the food. Yes, sir. You're 99% of the way there. Two Tom Young gum. Next, Nam Jim's heavyweight rivals from London are up against the ropes. The thighs roll. Yeah. It's the same table. Oh dear. And one of my undercover diners cops it. 
I'm not paying for it. You sure? Oh, yeah. I need to call the police there. What? I need to call the police there. Call the police? Yeah. Oh, my God. My best restaurant hit squad of 30 diners are on their way to the second Thai restaurant, battling for a semi-final place in my nationwide competition. Just a stone's throw from Buckingham Palace is one of the most popular Thai restaurants in the capital. It's Mango Tree. Hello. 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 How are you? Good to see you. I'm so happy to be here. Um, Come on, let's go. Forget how big this restaurant is. Nock has been front of house manager of this huge 160-seat restaurant since it opened 10 years ago. I love mango tree, it's my baby. This is my life, my inspiration. Even the kitchen's huge as well. How are you? Very nice to meet you. So nice to see an Englishman heading a <laughs> Thai <laughs> kitchen. Where are you from? I'm Thailand. You're from Thailand? Yeah. Thank God for that. Yeah. Head chef Mark's passion for Asian cuisine led him to work in Vietnamese and Japanese kitchens before coming to the mango tree. What we're trying to create is that essence of the Thai street food served in an elegant way. His accomplished take on Thai cuisine attracts 350 diners a night on a busy weekend. It's one of my favourite restaurants, probably, in London. You feel like you're in a five-star restaurant. I really enjoy coming here. It's one, it's, it's one of those places that you can really trust. For Mark, controlling such a vast operation is made harder by a less-than-ideal restaurant layout. With the kitchen and dining room on different floors, all the food is sent by lift. Two more grill pulls on, please. I'm getting nervous with all these earpieces. And he's like someone from the secret police. To coordinate food and service, the staff use radio headsets. And if all else fails, there's always the phone. Yeah, it's coming right now. When the customer happy, when the staff happy, I am very proud of what I'm doing. With Knox Battalion of waiters, and Mark's revered food, this huge restaurant should find my first test a doddle. But every restaurant I've tested so far has struggled with my coach load of 30 diners. Arriving and ordering all at once, they'll expect every dish to be cooked to perfection. I want my diners to leave tonight, you know, on cloud nine. I want their jaws on the floor. Really push it out, yeah? Okay. And good luck. Okay, thank, thank you very much. We got a new order. Two mien come, one chicken satay. We're just going to do what we do best, and that's the quality and the consistency of the food. And you don't want to be complacent. If there's 30 pad thai, there'll be 30 great pad thai. It's that simple. Mark has handpicked a small selection of his most popular dishes for my guests tonight, including shrimp tom yum, chicken satay, and tiger prawn pad thai. He's taken these Thai classics to a new level of sophistication with truly authentic flavors and exquisite presentation. But upstairs, front of house, I discovered he's made a big mistake with his menu. There's no vegetarian option. We can speak to chef, they can prepare whatever you like. I think we actually would like to speak to the manager yeah, and just find manager, out yeah. why there's not a vegetarian option. Six meals here and not even one of them are vegetarian. It's completely unacceptable. Can I help you, ma'am? Uh, yeah, um, we've got five vegetarians. I do apologize for this time, but all of the dish in here can be substituted to vegetarian. That's not a problem at all. You don't need to worry about it. Knox professionalism has calmed a potential mutiny. Meanwhile, the fish and meat eaters are loving the starters. Beautiful flavors, complement each other. Amazing, I would definitely recommend. But there's a serious problem with one diner's chicken satay. The chicken cooked, it's, it seems quite fleshy inside and quite pink. It's absolutely... Yeah, sorry, that, I mean, that's, uh, excuse me, that's pink though, no? If you don't mind taking that back, sure. that would be great, thank you. That will take another five, ten minutes, is that okay. right? Sure. You don't expect it from the top restaurant to ask for my food to be sent back to the kitchen. New order, one chicken satay. Well done. They're raw, you'll eat them. Both the chicken satay starter and the baby chicken main course are half cooked pre service and finished off to order by commie chef Nielsen. On this occasion, he's got it badly wrong. If he part cooks a chicken, you wouldn't expect it to go out pink. No. One chicken satay on the pot. It's very annoying when we're dealing with the people that we are dealing with tonight. There's no excuse for it. 
Mark's been quick to send up a replacement dish, but I want to see how well this lift system works. In my restaurant, I can bark orders at my waiters over the pass. But here, every dish that leaves the kitchen must travel up two flights of stairs by dumb waiter to Mikey. It's his job to send the food to the right table. Two suits. What are they sending? What table is that? I don't got any idea what the table is it. Well, they should tell you what table, table it is before they send the fucking thing, no? Yeah. Huh? I actually don't know never what is coming in the late. I can only guess seeing the food and pair it to the ticket. Okay, not he's sending food, but no one's told him what table in terms of you haven't yeah, got a ticket. Yeah, I don't got a ticket for this one. Yeah. So it's just oh, sat there dying. How about on table six? Just find out on table Please? six. Please. Jesus Christ. Come on. It's always like this. Yeah, it's always like this? Yeah. Fuck me, that's for 30. Can you imagine what it's like when you've got 300? Okay. Everything in the lift, send it. In your order. One from Yangon. As service ramps up, the system is falling apart. Oh, is this the main? It is, yes. Or if we wait while they finish the starter, then we bring our main meal. Oh, yes, okay, no problem. But most of the mistakes are picked up by the waiting staff before they hit the dining room. What's wrong with that? Send this down, yeah, and make a new one. He sent out wrong. Yeah. So I need, I need this instead, okay? Send it down. And what's that? What... This is still right. It's not missing. Uh, odd. I don't got a ticket for a Gayang, uh, but I go. What table is it? Send it down to you. This is crazy. Uh... That's fucking hell. What a mess. Lots of great food go nowhere fast. Oh. So odd, odd. If you send me again, table 38, table 38, they got the main cause already. Jesus Christ. That lift is busier than fucking Paris Hilton's knickers. Yes. Huh? Damn. This lift could be a nemesis. You have to give an absolute total pain in the ass. He doesn't know what he's sending up there. It leaves here immaculate. It goes up in the lift. They grab it out. It pisses down the side. Those diners are going to get pissed off with that. Do you know what I mean? It's nothing short of a miracle that all 30 diners eventually received the correct food. Mm -hmm. Oh, looks lovely. Yeah, look. My goodness, that is spicy. It's nice. Really nice, though. It's beautiful. Worth waiting for. Mm. I'm in yeah, heaven. I'm in heaven. Died and gone to heaven. But it seems once again this table has got a problem with their food. It's undercooked. Is it undercooked? Yeah. It's not cooked. After the earlier cock up with the undercooked chicken starter, unbelievably, it's happened again. This is little. Oh, All right, it's easy, it's easy. Yeah. to cook more, so sorry. Yeah. So let me just take it back. I'm always afraid for undercooked, undercooked mm -hmm. chicken, yes. cause could kill you. Mm. <laughs> yes. Now we're looking. Just the... Yeah, just on the bone. The, just on the bone. Fuck. Damn. So, Diane, come back. Raw. Mark is on the warpath. How's it possible? Huh? You not check any of them? I mean, look, you're fucking pre-cooking them. Is it that hard? Nobody wants to eat raw chicken. You? Huh? To my horror, the true scale of the chicken scandal is only just unfolding. That piece is raw. It's definitely raw. The other bits were OK, but this, yeah. just this one, that piece. So she's had one more poison coming. the same problem. The same again, And yeah? he also had it. Now what? I'll take one there. Two more portions of cream chicken, so they think make sure it's well done this time. What's wrong with that one? It's raw. Well, okay, well, again. No. Uh, it's the same table. Same table, yeah, 36. Yeah. He's right, let me think. Yeah? The thigh is raw. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shit. Oh, dear. This is the last thing I expected from this incredible restaurant. Head chef Mark looks as shocked as me. This is what we're talking about. Quality and the consistency. I'm the one who looks the crap.
Fuck me, that felt like 300. It did. Huh? Well, it's surprising. There's two, two tables that kind of messed it up. Lovely. Thank you. Right, fingers crossed for this one. <laughs> this piece is OK. It's stunning. It's really, really good. It's, it's a very big difference from the last plate I got. It's a credit to knock and a front of house team that the majority of my diners seem unaffected by the chaos. Really, really nice, really tasty. And the service is amazing today, really, really good. They're really accommodating when I said that I didn't like spicy food and stuff. The pad thai was really, really nice and mild. We're gonna just a sincere apology on behalf of Mango Tree to everyone uh, because there was a problem with the menu, the vegetarian. Our particular waiter has been absolutely wonderful with us, really attentive, and took a great interest into our experience here at the Mango Tree. In the end, most of my diners seem happy. But for Mark, it's been one of the toughest nights of his career. Uh, right, where should we start? I know what you're capable of. You only have to read the comments to why this restaurant is in this competition and the support you've got from customers is phenomenal. Totally. Then my diners arrive and, unfortunately, they haven't had that same experience. That's where it hurts for me. Come back. And come back strong. Absolutely. Good night. Good night. Let me throw that away. Yeah. Throw it all away. Sick of looking at it. Every time something isn't right, you know, I do take it very personally. It's no reflection that our team can't cook, but situations do happen sometimes. It's how you rectify them is the most important thing, and, and hopefully they, um, they don't happen again. Now I'm Jim and the mango tree have survived the coast trip. Now I want to meet up to review their performances. Or so they think. They have no idea I've been spying on them with the help of undercover diners who've been filming secretly. Simon Davis is a professional secret diner with an eagle eye for weak spots in restaurant food and service. Sarah Durden Robertson is a top food consultant who's been expertly dissecting menus, food and service for years. I've asked them both to be demanding to see how the restaurants respond. Wow. This is just a bit too spicy for me. Could I order the chicken? I'd really like to have that, but I ordered this one. <clears throat> First up is Nam Jim. And I'm about to show them a front of house fiasco that no one is prepared for. Unknown to both of you, I sent in a secret diner. That's very cunning. <laughs> and this is what he saw. Good evening, how are you? Have you got a table booked to the name of Duncan? Ah, that's the Thai haggis. Thank you very much. That haggis is a creative idea, it's fun, it's inventive, the spice level's perfectly pitched. It's the sort of thing that could set this restaurant apart from other Thai restaurants in the country. Absolutely loved it. And that kind of wow factor. My God. Can I try a glass of the, the white <coughs> Thai wine? I oh, do you? Can I just try a little bit? We had to buy it in glass, we do four bottles. I know, but I've never had Thai wine before. I don't know what it's going to well, be like. If you, don't, if you don't like it, you know, what am I going to do with the, the bottle? You know, you may... OK, can you bring a bottle, please? Yeah, thanks. Put it... If I open it, it, it means you have to have it. Well, if it's not very nice wine, I won't want to drink it. Wow. That's not how we offer wine services, is it? <laughs> Sandy? No, that's a bit of a shock to me. Yeah. OK, if you don't like it, you don't have to have it. OK. okay. Yeah. I don't think I do like that. Sorry? I don't think I do like that, actually. Yeah, I told you before, but uh, you know when to open it. I know, but I told you that if I didn't like it, I, I wouldn't have it. That waiter actually looked, looked at me and went... Would he behave like that if you were there, Sandy? 
I think not. What I'd more likely to do would be probably to come and ask what to do about the situation. Damn. It's not ideal. It is appalling. I'm just shocked, in all honesty. Excuse me, you said you're not yet that far away, why don't be on your bill? So, you know, I told what? you before. I told you before. Yeah. When I'm I... not paying for it. You sure? Oh, yeah. I need to call the police there. What? I need to call the police there. Call the police? Yeah. Basically, I told you before, if I have to... Hold on a minute. Way, I asked for a glass of Thai wine, uh, and OK? Before, and do are, you gonna, are you going to let me speak? OK. And you give me the evil eye and you say to me, I'm going to... You have to pay for that well, wine. Exactly. And, then, and, then, and, then, and then you say to me, if you don't pay for that wine, I'm going to go and call the police. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm going to do. It's absurd. You call that decent service, do you? Sorry, pay for, I'll pay for it. But, I mean, that's just absurd. That ranks as about the most aggressive service I've ever seen in my life. Oh, my God. I'll call the police. I'm lost for words. <laughs> Incredible. What I would love to happen is I'll put out an olive branch to the manager. He takes it. We kind of kiss and make up, figuratively speaking. Excuse me. Hi there. Hi there. Um, what's happening with the fact that the wine? To be honest, you know, like, uh, I did mention, I'm not going to charge you full price, but I have to charge you half price, is that OK? But, you know, oh, right. I didn't, you know, I did all this business with the police. I thought it was very strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to argument with the customer. Well, it's the only thing I can take it off, you know, like... Yeah. You shouldn't and, threaten to call the police. I know, I know. I'm, I'm really sorry for that. Yeah. Is that, is that OK? Yes. OK, thank you. Sorry. OK. You could see in his face, he knew. You shouldn't threaten to call the police. Sandy, how does it make you feel when you see that style of service being run in your business? Yeah, I'm, I'm both shocked, very embarrassed, and uh, not than, more than a little bit angry. Overall, that's been a, a very energising experience on many levels. I'm enthusiastic and excited about the quality of the food. The service has been smiling and courteous, apart from the one blip. And I'm leaving here thinking I would definitely come back here and I would tell people about it. And they're the two things that when you're a restaurant owner, you really want your diners to leave thinking about. <sighs> Some night you had. Wow. It will be corrected. That will never happen again. Obviously, the gentleman has, has come away with a, a decent experience, apart from that one blip, as he called it. But it, to be honest, it's difficult for me to look beyond that blip. Everything you did was perfect, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, it's... I'm, I'm, I'm upset, and I think it's a combination of uh, being very excited and very happy, and then one minute, and then going the complete opposite end of the spectrum the next. And, um, you know, so at the minute, Sorry. I think I'm just a little bit lost for words. I'm just very, you know, a bit angry. For someone to point out of this, you know, because of the bad service and then the thing, it's not, it's not that, not what we want. Our customers come first in everything. I hope we haven't blown our chances within the competition. Um, we're going to have to work hard. Next. The chefs feel the heat in their final battle at my flagship restaurant. What's wrong with that? So the chicken is undercooked. Fuck. Tonight, two amazing restaurants are going head to head in a competition to find my best restaurant in Britain. New order, two Tom Young gum. Now it's the turn of London's Thai culinary giant, Mango Tree, to get the spy treatment. How are you? Yes. Are you well? Yes, good. Welcome. We've actually been tested twice. Mm. Because since I've left the mango tree, I sent in my secret diners. Right. Yeah, and here's what they saw. On the coach trip, head chef Mark was crestfallen when undercooked chicken was sent back to the kitchen. Manager Knox's supervision kept them on side. But how do they do when I'm not watching? I've got a small plank on my table. <laughs> that is filthy. They've got all these plastic wipe clean covers, but they never wipe them clean. It's got food caked all over it. It's revolting. Nothing 
more disappointing first touch of the menu, dirty. That glass noodle salad is so spicy. It's too spicy for you. Is there any way I could have it, but just a bit less spicy? I would say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <gasps> wow. Wow, fantastic. That was really quick as well. They've brought some of the sauce separately in case I want to control my own measure, but that's exactly what you should do. Exactly. Uh, well handled. Great. When somebody says they want something a certain way, mm -hmm. we don't understand what their less spicy is. Sure. So it gives them the opportunity to, to do that themselves. But it was handled brilliantly. It's not very relaxing, the fact that I don't know what they're doing. There's someone going on the back tables, pulling this serving mats from under the cutlery. So every table he does, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Every time they do it, I feel like I've overstayed my work and they're trying to clear the tables. Would you please get out now? I feel like saying I'm terribly sorry. Am I in your way? What a shame when they feel that awkward and the noise is ridiculous, especially when you're trying to eat dinner. The food was fantastic, faultless, loved it. Complained about a couple of things, sent them back, and they completely dealt with it. But their customer care is pretty shockingly bad. It's a bizarre place. It's neither one thing nor the other. They care and they don't care. Uh, food, delicious, second to none. But that attention to detail with the service, it has to be worked at for everybody. You forget that sometimes when you're doing such big numbers. So don't take it personally, take it professionally. Absolutely. It was interesting. Yeah. It was a bit of an eye-opener, what we saw on the film. It is upsetting. If I were a customer, I, I, would, I would say the same. So I'm um, very disappointed. I don't feel let down by the service because we are the team. We take the pats on the back together, but we take the knocks together as well, and we will fix it. There is more to the competition, and we don't want this to be the end for us. Both restaurants have been left reeling by these revelations, but there's still everything to play for. For their final battle, I'm bringing the chefs face to face in my flagship restaurant. I've challenged each chef to create one amazing dish for 20 guests. But to guarantee a place in the semi-finals, it'll have to be the finest dish of their lives. Well, happy to be here. So. <laughs> it's a dream. So we both very, very proud. If we win, that would be brilliant. It was our customers that have put us where we are. It speaks volumes that they're proud of what we're doing. Everything is focused on today in winning. Right, huge pressure test, this one, to cook 20 stunning dishes. Make them taste absolutely delicious. Create that level of perfection. Sadly, one of you will be leaving the competition and one of you will be going through to the semi-final. Make sure it's you. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Both restaurants will be attempting to impress me with a dish made from chicken. The perfect meat to complement the heady, aromatic herbs and spices used in Thai cooking. Both the mango tree and Nam Jim have had their ups and downs, and I'm hoping that they put all that aside and they focus on those 20 dishes and use that as they come back. Outside, a dining room full of VIPs, all with a passion for Thai food, will help me judge both dishes tonight. Including Thai cookery writer, Oi Cheap Chai Sara and one of my all-time favourite Thai chefs, Patria Wirapan. All the front of house teams can do is wait and hope. An order, two covers away, table three, the mango tree, two baby chicken. Yes, chef. For mango tree, head chef Mark is sticking his neck out with a new complex dish made from the baby chickens that almost floored him on the coach trip. He was gutted when undercooked chicken was sent out three times. It's cooked enough. I just hope he knows what he's doing today. I'm happy with that. Oh, lovely flavour. Beautiful smell. You're quite fond of baby chicken, aren't you? I am. We've changed it from, obviously, when we've done it in the restaurant. Yep. We've learnt from our mistakes of, yep. um, you know, making sure it cooks. It's why I wanted to do it. Good. I'm not going to run away from anything. Good. Very bold to put that baby chicken back on the menu again. Mark's exposed. There's only two of them, him and Odd. So it's... Pure focus. For Nam Jim, I'm worried that B is still shaken by my secret diner's bombshell. I'm so hot. Being in here, golden kitchen, I'm nervous. I don't want this to affect the quality of our dish. 
First of all, I want to clear something really important. It's gone, the wine. I want you to set that completely behind you. Okay. Today is about you and your food, and then show me that passion. Yeah? I will. Tonight, be sticking to what she does best. Authentic food packed with flavour. Marinated chicken with pan-fried oyster mushrooms and a punchy basil puree. But to elevate this dish to my restaurant's three Michelin star standards, she needs to be completely on the ball. Four rice, please, Pete. Service, please. Table six. Come on, guys. The food's hanging around too long. B is making simple mistakes. All right, now, please. Now, I'm Jim. Yeah. Two chicken. Yeah. B, no, you're not even listening sorry. to me. After that, it's two more, not four more. Okay, You've got chef. four chicken in there. Okay, chef. Okay. So, do you want to take two chicken out? After uh, this is not. Too... All right, table B, two. Yes. after okay. this, okay. it's okay. only so... two more. Okay. You've got okay. four in the pan, okay. so why don't you take two out? I will do. Four. B's lack of focus is beginning to worry me. I need to see her really step up to the mark. It's doing OK. It's just messy at the moment. I'm rushing. Let's focus on the service, B. Yeah? Let's focus on these, okay. yeah? B, she's had a rocky ride up into this stage. I want that to be put behind her and just focus on her 20 plates and come back, but come back strong. Service, please. Table six, as quick as you can, please, yeah? Thank you. Oh, I'm so nervous. But we we getting there. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's been a struggle, but she's got the food out. Service, please. Much better, yeah? Well done, B. Good job. Thank you. Go, please. First dish we try will be from Nan Chin. Enjoy. The chicken is very subtle, and the sauce is beautiful. It's lovely aroma, but presentation, I'm not quite... I'm quite confident. I thought B's dish was excellent. After his chicken disaster, Mark has determined every piece will be cooked to perfection today. How long, please, Mark? Four portions, table two in three minutes. His final touch is to grill it, to turn the skin a delicious golden brown. Mark, your dish, is it supposed to be crispy, the skin? Semi-crispy. Semi semi I don't semi want it to come across as burnt. Good. First table, table five, please, yeah? You happy with that, Mark? No, no. What is that fragrance again? Jasmine? Yes. Very nice. Mark has gone the extra mile, and his food looks wonderful. Go, please, table five, thank you. This wow. is the mango tree. Beautiful, yeah. It looks beautiful. Very delicate. I, I am happy. I'm so happy. So exciting about it. From the mango tree. You can see from my face, this is wow factor for me. The finishing line is within sight when the unthinkable happens. Excuse me, um, I'm just a bit disappointed because actually, as you can see, this is not really cooked. Let me show it to the, the chef. And okay, thanks very says, much. Thank me, you. Let me take it away for you. Thank you. Good. Table six, please, service. I need you to... What's not happy there? with this, chef. They said the chicken is undercooked. Where's it under... Oh, fuck it's it. Fine. Yeah. It is there, Mark. It's not even coming off the bone there. You can see it clear as day. Mm. Fuck me. Fuck. <sighs> Damn, I'm so pissed off. Pink chicken comes back again, and if there was ever a time not to serve it, it's right now not good enough. Four more, Mark, please. How long? Just give me time so I can tell the dining room. Three minutes. Three minutes for table one, please. Tell Rob. Don't worry about the leg, yeah? Fuck the leg. Pretty pissed off. Made to eat my own words. I'm not happy. Mark, have you checked all them? You see them underneath as well, yeah? Yeah. Go. Table one, please, yeah? Even I could never have guessed service would end like this for Mango Tree. It's been a challenging night for everyone. But it's time to find out what my diners thought of both dishes, starting with Mango Tree. Let's talk chicken. Well, ours wasn't cooked. No, well, that was a uh, ridiculous mistake. Uh, yeah. My apologies. It just it wasn't even leaving the bone, was it? It was probably still clucking. Fortunately, not all my diners had the same experience. It looked great when it came. Yes. And when we tasted it, the herbs go right through it. Better than six, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I preferred the mango tree because I loved the chicken on the bone. It kept it really moist, very, very tasty. And the broth with it just worked. Loved it all. I had to go for them, too, because I like the sauce so much. 
it's beautifully marinated, subtle, and then you've got the sauces complement. Perfect combination. From Nam Jim? Yes, and the chicken is lovely, but the rice is a bit too much water. I mean, you know yes. your rice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. Now I face a very difficult choice. Which one of these two restaurants should go through to the semi-finals? For Gordon Ramsay to say, you're the best, that has meant a lot. I would never forget it. Neither restaurant has been without fault, but even good restaurants have their bad days. I'm obviously hoping that the other 19 dishes make a bigger impact and impression than the one. But can I forgive Mark for undercooking chicken again? My two top Thai contenders, Nam Jim and Mango Tree, have completed a nail-biting service in my flagship restaurant. Both chefs have produced an incredible dish, but both have fallen short of perfection. Now I have to choose which restaurant is truly deserving of a place in the semi-final. But first, I need to make my own judgment on both dishes. Nam Jim, it looks slightly clumsy. Mm. Chicken's delicious. It's got that nice crisp texture to the outside. You smear that sauce on top of that chicken, the whole thing just comes alive. Not eye-catching, but mouth-watering in taste. Mango Tree have gone the extra mile, and it looks like it's been done with great finesse. Flair, lovely. The broth is almost like a sort of Tom Yum gun. It's like two dishes in one. Rice, soft, fluffy, and incredibly fragrant. Nice little spray at the end with that jasmine. Really nice. Chicken's delicious, but I'm just slightly nervous about that soft, chewy skin. Should be crispy. Two remarkable Thai restaurants, but only one can continue through to the next round. OK. Right, I brought both restaurants here to give you an opportunity, a unique opportunity to really cook like you've never cooked before. Nam Jim, I saw the dish. It didn't look the most appetizing, having been to your restaurant and seen the style in which you deliver food. It was a little bit of a surprise to see something so basic as that. I tasted the chicken and bang, it was just, yeah, it was amazing. However, at this stage in the competition, this round is not won on a single dish. Nam Jim, Secret Diners, no experienced food like that. Absolutely love that food. Haggis in a Thai restaurant. It doesn't even sound right. But for you to turn into something that good, very few restaurants can do that anywhere. Mango Tree, the fascinating thing with you, Mark, is you're not even, you're not even from Thailand. You seem to have this magic with Thai cuisine that is a, uh, is a gift. And when mango tree's at its best, it's untouchable. Sent in a secret diner. Absolutely blown away with that food. I mean, really, really blown away with that food. To do the Busan again, at this stage in the competition, I admire the balls. It was sweet. It was delicious and authentic. How could I criticise that? How could I look at that dish and tell you how to do it better. I didn't have to. For the first time in this competition, a dish came back. You've left me with a very tough decision. The restaurant going through to the semi-final is... Nam Jim. Congratulations. Oh. Well done. Yes. Ooh, good job. Well done, you. With your touch and the amount of experience you have with Thai cuisine, I know you've got more coming. Very disappointed. You know, I'm sorry for letting Odd and North and the team and our customers down, but, you know, that's the way it goes. You know, I uh, wish Nan Jim all the luck, but... I'm pretty pissed off at the moment.
Someone never tell me before I'm, I'm, I'm good and I'm, I'm into this competition, so it means so much for me. It's a bit mind-boggling for us. We were all very, very proud and a little bit shocked and stunned, I think. I'm so happy. What an amazing day and two great restaurants. I'll be sorry to say goodbye to the mango tree. But on the same hand, we've opened the door to something quite magical in St Andrews because they are a force to be reckoned with. But for Nam Jim now, the competition really starts because the next stage of this competition is going to be even tougher.